So should you be trying to save your relationship after a breakup or should you be trying to forget all of that, close that chapter and move forward? That's what we're gonna be talking about in this video and it's not as clear cut as maybe you might think it should be. Following up from everything that we've talked about thus far about really getting yourself into a good place emotionally, building that relationship with your own inner child, really allowing yourself to find the peace of mind that comes with sort of drifting over into the, the dark places that maybe you don't often let yourself go to when it comes to thinking about life without your partner, etc. And finding that really grounded kind of peace within yourself. From this point, it's now a good idea to make a choice about what the right thing for you is. We don't want to make this decision beforehand because you may be making a choice out of impulse, out of reaction, out of just sort of instinct or something like that. And again, just because you were in a relationship with someone and that ended up breaking up doesn't mean you, that you should get back into that relationship. Like obviously, if you want to have a peaceful, easygoing life and your ex is a narcissist, then you know, hey, there's a fundamental incompatibility right there. And probably trying to save that relationship is not going to result in you being any happier as the result of it. But on the on the other hand, there are lots of people who have saved a relationship after their breakup and gone on to create amazing, beautiful lives together, where they've maybe gotten married, where they've gone ahead and started families together, they've lived out life dreams, they've uh, really, you know, grown together in amazing and beautiful ways. I don't think that we want to be quick to jump to one conclusion or another, because there are definitely merits to moving on. There's also merits to saving your relationship and all of that. But you have to come at this from a place of being emotionally whole and complete yourself, which is why this whole series that we've gone over here has been building upon this idea of being whole and complete um, yourself as well too. Put in that work that we've talked about. And then from there, start to ask yourself, you know, what is your ultimate life going to look like? And how does a relationship fit into that? What do you imagine your life to be like? like? Do you want to get married? Do you want to start a family together? Do you want to, you know, live the, the jet set kind of life and travel around a lot and live out all these life dreams and everything like that? These are all totally valid things or maybe something else is totally valid for you as well too. But based off of what you know about your ex, and based off of what you know about their personality, their character, how they're showing up, how they're living their life, the energy that they're bringing, etc., is that congruent with where you want to go when it comes to your life, when it comes to your relationship, when it comes to everything else? Because one thing I can tell you is that, yes, people can and do change. Yes, people can turn a new leaf, they can evolve, they can somehow find ambition within themselves, they can somehow find peace, they can get over pettiness and all that sort of stuff. But we can't expect them to do it on our time frame. If they are a good match for you and what you want, then it very well may make sense for you to try to save that relationship once you're in a good emotional place. If on the other hand though, they're not aligned for the kind of life and relationship and everything else that you want, then maybe they're just not a very good fit for you. You know, if they are inconsistent, if they do not follow through with what they say they're gonna do, if they withhold their affection when they feel hurt or something like that, and your goal is to perhaps get married and have children with this person, like do you think that's gonna be um, a good reflection of a good husband or wife? Do you think that person is gonna make a great parent for your future children together? Do you think that these are great parent qualities that you would want to have someone have as their mother or father? If not, then this is probably not the right relationship for you. Of course, people can and do change as we talked about, but they're only going to change when they themselves are ready to do that. Not because you said the right thing, you did the right thing, you you know were somehow able to save them from their, their faults or anything like that, but they're only going to do this when the time is right for them, if they even get to that point at all. And the thing is, I don't want you to wait indefinitely for things to line up if they're just not gonna line up anytime soon or even if they're gonna line up at all. And so if that's the case, then what actually makes the most sense 
is to lovingly let go of them so that you have the space in your life to welcome in someone who can be that partner that you want. And so they have the space to welcome in someone into their life who can love and appreciate them for the person that they are right now. That may be a hard choice to make, but ultimately what I can tell you is if you are embodying love, if you are embodying the characteristics and qualities that you want to see in your relationship, you will eventually draw that to you. And it will come to you through the path of least resistance. If it's through them, excellent. If it's not through them, if it's through someone else, then that is 100% fine as well too. And I can promise you that even if it comes to you through someone else, you will not regret it. You will not say, oh, well, gosh, you know, this other person's really cool, but I feel like it's it's a consolation prize because who I really wanted to be with was with my ex. You're not going to feel that way because you're going to have the kind of dynamic and the kind of relationship that you really want. And you're not going to see your ex as the one who got away or the one who slipped through your fingers. I mean, trust me, I get it. If you talk to me, you know, the day after me and my big ex broke up for the final time, you know, yeah, I probably would have said, yeah, I want to get back together with her. No, I'm not interested in meeting anyone else. But, you know, fast forward, I've now met my wife. We've been together for, at this point, 15 years. And um, we have this daughter together. We have this life together. And I, I can honestly say my life has never been better in that regard. I don't wish that I was back together with my big ex. I don't see her as the one who got away or anything. Honestly, every setback I have had, every challenge I have had has strengthened me and made me into the person that I can actually hold that relationship, that I can actually be in a relationship with that woman, that kind of woman. I wouldn't have been able to have that kind of relationship. I wouldn't have been able to be with that kind of woman had I not gone through all of these trials and difficulties and really let myself grow as a person as the result of a lot of the things that we've talked about in this video series. And so you might be wondering like, okay, well, like where, where does that leave me? What should I be doing now? Well. If you do want to explore what it's like to get back together with your ex without playing mind games, without manipulating, without all that you know BS stuff that honestly has no place in a great, amazing relationship, then please go ahead and check this out right here. Otherwise, I'd also like you to check out this video series right here on your ex's emotional world, the five stages of getting back together. With that being said, take care, and I'll see you over there.